Hello, and welcome to the Citizen Preparedness Corps' Disaster Preparedness. What do you need to know? New York State's Guide for Citizen Safety in an Emergency. The Citizens Preparedness Corps gives residents the knowledge and tools they need to prepare for emergencies and disasters, respond accordingly, and to recover as quickly as possible. As you move through this presentation, you will learn important concepts and techniques for dealing with emergencies and keeping your family safe. Please take your time with this material and take advantage of all the resources listed in this presentation to better protect yourself and those around you in an emergency. By the end of this presentation, you should be able to identify the types of hazards which could affect you and your family, know how to begin preparing an emergency plan for your household, and know how to put yourself, your family, and your community in a better position to recover from a catastrophic event. The agenda for this presentation is as follows. Part 1. Preparing your plan. Part 2. You are a first responder. Part 3. Recovery is a process. Before we begin, you should be aware of the types of hazards that you will need to think about throughout this presentation. Think about the state, your community, and your home, as each will help you focus on a different set of potential situations that you could face. There are four types of potential hazards in New York State, and although some are mainly seasonal events, most can occur at any time. There are natural hazards, such as hurricanes and tropical storms, tornadoes, storms with severe wind and heavy rain, snow and ice, flooding and fire, human-caused hazards, such as a bomb threat, terrorism, cyber attack, an active shooter, or domestic violence. There are also technological hazards, such as power failures, airplane crashes, dam or levee failures, and train derailments. Finally, there are biological hazards, such as infectious diseases, contaminated food, and animal disease outbreaks. Given the wide array of threats which put our state at risk, every New Yorker needs to be prepared for any number of types of hazards and situations where everyday needs may not be readily available. Planning and acting with common sense can make all the difference in a dangerous situation. Part 1. Preparing Your Plan during an emergency, it is always better if you have a plan you can use to guide your response. Being prepared takes three simple steps. First, sit down with family members and work together to develop a family emergency plan. Second, prepare your family and your home by learning about techniques and resources to stay safe. Third, practice your plan. Involve all family members and practice the plan to improve it over time. We begin with developing a family emergency plan. Ask yourself and your family these questions. What potential hazards could affect us? Detail the types of potential hazards in your specific area and what impacts they may have on your home, neighborhood, work, or school. Next, think about what is likely to happen with each hazard. Your plan should provide basic steps to address the situations these hazards cause. Finally, keep your family emergency plan simple so it's easy for all to remember during stressful emergency situations. Now think about who you may be planning for in your family, for example, such as babies or infants, the elderly or pets. Are there concerns or medical needs that need to be addressed? Does anyone in your family need special equipment or have special dietary needs? What emergency supplies does your family need for daily living? Are these supplies assembled and easy to retrieve? And have you considered what is essential to each member of your family, such as a favorite stuffed animal or toy for a young child? Where will you go in an emergency and how will you get there? Make sure all family members are familiar with escape routes from your home, work, and places you visit. If you are somehow separated from loved ones, ensure that your family emergency plan includes two locations where you will meet up. You should pick two locations, one near your home and another outside the community, and ensure that family members are familiar with evacuation routes from your community. Think about how your family members will stay in contact with each other in an emergency. Ask an out-of-town relative or friend to be your point of contact or choose an organization for everyone in your family to contact. And don't forget about social media, which can be helpful for communications in an emergency. 
even if it's just to let others know you are safe. Another important part of emergency planning is knowing where to get information. New York State uses the Emergency Alert System, or EAS, and Wireless Emergency Alerts, or WEA, to provide critical information to people in an emergency. NOAA weather radios broadcast up-to-the-minute weather information, so it's good to have one on hand. Warning sirens near places such as dams and nuclear power plants are designed to alert nearby residents of emergencies involving those facilities. And of course, social media can again be an important tool for learning more about an emergency. Remember that services and plans likely exist for those organizations with which you are already involved, such as schools, workplaces, daycare centers, elder care, or senior citizen centers and babysitters. Talk with representatives from these organizations to supplement and align your emergency planning efforts. If you're looking for additional support, local emergency management officials can be tremendous resources who can help with your emergency planning. Other resources include community-based volunteer opportunities, community emergency response teams or CERT teams, local first responders such as volunteer or career fire and EMS agencies, faith-based organizations, and long-standing disaster relief organizations such as the American Red Cross. These organizations can assist you with updated information or locating services such as shelters, food banks, or emergency medical treatment and other services that may be needed within the community. Once you have your plan established, the next step is to prepare your home and your family by learning about techniques and resources to stay safe you can take steps now to better prepare for an emergency by learning about basic first aid. Having a first aid kit and emergency supplies for every member of your family, including pets. Acting to prevent fire and carbon monoxide poisoning. Knowing to operate critical home utilities. Knowing what type of insurance you have. Practicing good cyber hygiene and maintaining awareness of your surroundings. One of the most important things you can know in an emergency is first aid. Sign up for first aid CPR classes to learn how to respond to common medical injuries, including bleeding, burns, poisoning, shock, and respiratory emergencies. You may also wish to obtain additional certifications for AED, Stop the Bleed, and Narcan training. If you know how to stop bleeding, you can save a life. In the event of a major emergency, emergency services may be stretched thin and it could take more time to restore utilities and other services. It is important that all family members be prepared to survive without assistance for seven to 10 days. Take the time now to identify and collect supplies because when the event happens, it's already too late. Monitor your supplies and replace items when they expire. For a list of potential supplies and for more information, go to prepare.ny.gov. Speaking of supplies, it's also a good idea to prepare a small go kit that you can take with you if you need to leave quickly. Your kit should consist of a sturdy bag, backpack or duffel bag, water and container, non-perishable foods, flashlight and batteries, a small first aid kit, a signal whistle, moist towelettes, 10 days of necessary medications and cash and anything else that you will require for a week or more. Preparedness shouldn't just be focused on the people living in the home either. There should also be a focus on preparing the physical home itself. Fire is the greatest safety threat to the population in the United States, more than all other natural disasters combined. It is important to take steps to prevent fire and to teach family members about the dangers of fire. Talk with your family about things that could ignite a fire or contribute to greater fire spread or injury, including cooking, misuse of electricity, heating, open flame, smoking, and housekeeping. If you don't have smoke alarms or have outdated ones, install new alarms throughout your home and test them frequently. You should have smoke alarms in every bedroom, outside every sleeping area, and on every level of the home, including the basement. Remember to change the batteries in all smoke alarms when clocks are set for daylight savings time or replace existing smoke alarms with 10-year no-tamper battery units. 
The sensors and fire alarms only last for 10 years. Turn your alarm over to see when it was produced. Do you need a new one? Home fire extinguishers can ensure a small kitchen fire does not spread and burn down your home or the neighborhood. Ensure fire extinguishers are available and that each person in your home knows where they are located and how to use it. It's also important to know the different types of fire and what extinguishers will put them out. As a rule, wood, cloth, and paper can be put out with water, while flammable liquids such as kitchen grease, oil, and gasoline, and electrical equipment such as appliances and televisions should never be treated with water. Always dial 911 before attempting to extinguish a fire. Never put your personal safety on the line when trying to put out flames. Carbon monoxide is called the silent killer because it is a colorless, odorless, and tasteless flammable gas that can do severe physical damage and even cause death. When installing carbon monoxide alarms in your home, be aware that the installation location for some alarms vary by manufacturer. Read the provided installation manual for each alarm. Locate alarms near sleeping areas, on every level, and in every bedroom to provide extra protection for loved ones. Remember, New York state law requires a CO alarm in every dwelling unit. To eliminate sources of carbon monoxide, follow these important rules. Do not use unventilated portable heating units indoors. Do not operate damaged furnaces, boilers, or heaters. And do not operate portable electrical generators indoors. Any of these activities can cause deadly carbon monoxide poisoning. When preparing your home for a possible emergency, you should know how to identify utility shutoffs and how to secure them. Electrical utilities include circuit breakers or fuses. Fuel gas utilities include natural gas or propane. And don't forget about your water supply. Check your tools. Do you have the right ones available to complete these tasks? Remember that furnaces, electrical panels, water heaters, fuel tanks, and other utilities must be made safe before an event, and then again after the event if they have sustained physical damage or flooding. Once you turn off your utilities, you should never attempt to turn on any gas, electric, or water connections until the system has been inspected and approved by a professional. Also, don't wait until disaster strikes to review your homeowner's or renter's insurance policies. You should know now what is covered and what is not. Most policies do not cover flood damage. Ask your insurance agent for no and low-cost ways to reduce risk to your home. Photograph belongings and create lists, preferably digital, to catalog items and ensure replacement cost. Keep a copy of your information outside of your home. Maybe you have a safety deposit box or a family member or close friend that will keep this information in another location for you. In the digital age, not all threats are physical in nature, and good cyber awareness and cyber hygiene is a critical element of staying safe from hackers, scammers, thieves, and other bad actors. Beware of common email scams. Use strong, unique passwords and do not share them with anyone. Don't click on links in emails or on social media that look questionable, especially from those that appear to be from banks, credit card companies, government agencies, or other organizations. Monitor your online financial institutions. Do not send personal information and responses to emails, including Social Security or Medicare, and regularly back up important information. Finally, practice makes perfect, especially when it comes to emergencies. Ask yourself and your family these important questions on a regular basis, whether it's month by month or at the very least annually. Does everyone in the family know the plan? Does everyone know who to contact and where to go? Where are your go bags located? Have supplies been checked? And do you need to update the plan? Part two, you are a first responder. In an emergency, it's important to remember the first, first responder is you. During an emergency, don't panic. Take a deep breath and assess the situation. Use your senses. What do you see, hear, or smell? Rely on your training and planning to take action. When it's safe to do so, check on others. Continue to gather information and respond according to your situation, which may change as the incident progresses. 
If you have received first aid training, first check your surroundings to make sure it is a safe place for you to be. Next, call for help if needed. Remember that emergency services will be busy during a disaster, so only call if you cannot manage the first aid need. Finally, care for the injured person by providing physical and emotional care to the level for which you have been trained. In the event of a major emergency, you may be asked to take one of two actions, either shelter in place or evacuate. If you are asked to shelter in place, take the following steps. First, let someone know where you are. If it is safe to do so, check on and help your neighbors, especially seniors and others who may not be able to care for themselves. Monitor alerting systems such as NY Alert for notifications and ensure that you are receiving constant information from authorities. Stay away from damaged utilities and all downed wires. Treat any downed wire as if it were live. If you are using them, generator and space heaters must be properly ventilated. Review safety recommendations to ensure your safety. And remember to use 911 for life-threatening emergencies only. In an evacuation, as with sheltering in place, the first thing to do is let someone know where you are and where you plan on going. If you have time, check on neighbors. Before you leave, secure your home by moving valuables to a safe location, turning off utilities, locking doors and windows, and boarding up the home. Leave in an orderly manner and follow only official instructions. Know your destination and routes in advance. Take your go kit with only the most essential items, water, food, flashlight and batteries, first aid kit, medications, cash, etc. Do not return home until local authorities advise you that it is safe or all clear, and plan on what to do with your pets in an evacuation. Check that where you are going accepts pets. If you find yourself in a situation where you are completely or partially trapped, first, don't panic. Ask yourself these questions to help you stay calm and get help. First, are you able to get to a phone or cell phone? If you can, call 911 and explain your situation. If you cannot get to a phone, can you call for help? Do you have something you can use to get attention, such as a whistle or a surface on which you can tap or bang? Do not continually yell because it will tire and dehydrate you. Ask yourself, what is trapping me? Is it a blocked exit or debris? Am I injured? How? Can I move whatever is blocking my escape? Escaping partially collapsed structures is like playing Jenga. Shifting the weight of heavy objects can cause further injury, so be extremely careful. If you encounter a situation in which someone else is trapped, first ask these questions. Can you hear them calling out or making noise? Are they within sight and can you reach them? Are they conscious or unconscious? Can they answer questions? Do they seem to be alert and oriented? Can they move on their own? What is trapping them? Blocked exit? debris, injuries. Can you free them safely? If not, call 911. A boil water order is often issued by local authorities as a precaution when drinking water is suspected to be contaminated by pathogens. If you have any doubt regarding the quality of your water, boil it using this method. Strain the water through a cheesecloth, coffee filter, or another clean filter material. Bring water to a rolling boil for two minutes then let cool. Pour the water into a container that has been boiled or sanitized with chlorine bleach and refrigerate until use. Do not store water in sinks or bathtubs. Do not use unboiled tap water to drink, prepare food, or even brush your teeth. And make sure you do not give unboiled water to pets. If you experience a fire, the first rule is get out, stay out, and call 911. Yell fire several times to alert anyone who may be in the vicinity and go outside immediately. If closed doors or handles are warm or smoke blocks your primary escape route, use your second way out. Never open doors that are warm to the touch. If you must escape through smoke, get low and go under the smoke to your exit. Be sure to close doors behind you. If smoke, heat, or flames block your exit routes, stay in the room with doors closed. Place a wet towel under the door and call the fire department or 911. Open a window and wave a brightly colored cloth or flashlight to signal for help. Once you are outside, 
go to your meeting place and then send one person to call the fire department. If you cannot get to your meeting place, follow your family emergency communication plan. If you see suspicious activity, do not take direct action. Do not confront the individual and do not reveal your suspicions. If it is safe to do so, record as many details as possible about the individual and their activity and notify authorities as soon as it is safe to do so. If you have a smartphone, download the See Something, Send Something app from New York State. In any circumstance, if you believe you are in immediate danger, call 911. If you observe suspicious behavior, call the New York State Terrorism Tips Line at 1-866-SAFE-NYS. An active shooter is defined as someone who actively engages in killing or attempting to kill people in a confined and populated area with a firearm and has no method to their selection of victims. The sad reality is that an active shooter incident can happen anywhere at any time. That's why it's so important to stay aware and alert whenever in a location where people are gathered, such as a shopping center, hospital, office building, club or restaurant, school, fair or festival, or house of worship. Most active shooter situations are over within 10 minutes, sometimes before law enforcement arrives. Individuals must be mentally and physically able to deal with an active shooter situation. Remember these three words, run, hide, fight, run. Look for an accessible escape path and create distance between you and the shooter. Hide, buy yourself time, silence your cell phone if you can, hide behind something that hides you and would stop a bullet. Lock and or block doors, fight. When your life is in imminent danger, as a last resort, fight with all your might. It's important to remember that the order of these actions does not matter here. You should evaluate your own individual situation and determine which response is best for you in that moment. Sometimes you may run, then hide, then run again. You may need to hide, then fight, and then run. Do what works for you in your situation. In an active shooter situation, the responding police will go immediately to the area where shots are being heard or were reported. They will likely bypass non-threatening persons, including injured people. Therefore, you are responsible for your own safety and first aid if necessary. Take care of yourself first and others second. Eight minutes or 480 seconds is the time within which an active shooter situation typically begins and ends, less than 10 minutes. New York State and the State Preparedness Training Center in Oriskany have produced an important video that talks about what you can do in an active shooter situation. Visit youtube.com forward slash NYSDHSES to view the video. Part three, recovery is a process. Recovery may not be immediate. Remember, you have just experienced a traumatic incident. Programs to assist survivors may require paperwork. You may need to replace your identification or documentation. Be prepared for scams and remember to take care of your needs. After a disaster, once authorities give the all clear, follow these steps to safely return home. First, do not return home until the area has been declared safe by local officials. Let someone know that you are returning and let them know when you have arrived. Check your home for obvious structural damage before entering and, if you are unsure, consult with a professional. Utilities may have to be checked by a professional and inspect appliances before turning them back on. Do not attempt to turn on any gas, electric, or water connections. Assume all downed wires are live and dangerous. Document and photograph damage to your property. Contact your insurance company as soon as possible. There may be a wait list for inspection of damages and repair estimates. Be wary of fly-by-night contractors and report any scams. Local authorities will provide instructions on disposal procedures, including food, household waste, and debris. Contact your local emergency management office to determine if there are disaster assistance programs in your community and pay close attention to any program requirements and documentation. When making repairs to your home, 
consider improvements that will reduce the likelihood of similar damage happening again. Any disaster can be emotionally draining for anyone involved. Everyone exposed to a disaster will have a reaction in the immediate aftermath. For most people, fear, anxiety, and confusion will gradually decrease. Pay attention to yourself and those around you to see if they are overly stressed during a disaster. Make sure you seek appropriate counsel if you feel overwhelmed with fear, anxiety, or confusion. Support could come from a mental health counselor, the clergy, or other trained professionals. Following the information and guidelines in this course presentation can help save your life in an emergency. For more information, please visit www.prepare.ny.gov or reach out to your local emergency management office and get started on your family emergency plan today. Don't forget to include your whole family. Thank you for watching and be safe.